Tonight on Nate Newswatch. Nate has a new president. I would never not take a position because of difficult times. The polar plunge looks a little different this year. Give them the opportunity to succeed. The annual Deep Freeze Festival starts this weekend. In this case, we've moved everything online with regards to performance. Newswatch starts now. Good evening. For the first time in Nate's history, the college has a female president. Laura Jo Gunter was officially introduced and installed as the seventh president of the Polytechnic this week, taking on a new post at perhaps one of the most difficult periods in Nate's 59-year history. Sarah Gouda is live in the News Center with more on this historic appointment. Thank you, Phil Zahn Dawson. Laura Jo, as she likes to be called, took the reins of Nate last August, right in the middle of the pandemic. Now she replaced Glenn Feltham, who took over the Nate for nine years. I had a chance to sit down with Laura Jo and discuss her goals and challenges. Now, as a businesswoman, she was very well prepared. A prayer and Indigenous music welcomed Nate's new president with fanfare on Monday. Unlike previous presidential appointments, this one was unique in that nobody was at Nate to lay out the red carpet. Instead, it was all done online. Laura Jo comes to Nate after three years in the top job at Bow Valley College in Calgary. She takes over a year at a time when students are primarily learning from home. And the campus is recovering from a big hit in government funding. But even through all that, she says if she can make it through COVID, she can make it through anything. Well, I would never not take a position because of difficult times. I mean, these are actually some of the most exciting times. It's really great to be able to step up to the challenge as a leader. Like I said, there's a number of, of um, academic staff and students who have found that they really like remote learning. Laura Jo has a BA in Mass Communication and Masters in Business. She was a member of the Interactive Ontario Board and serves as a board member of the North York General Hospital. Laura Jo comes to us with many years of experience in post-secondary across Canada. She has a keen understanding of the challenges and opportunities. Although it's been hard to see students in a time of COVID, she's looking forward to getting to know Nate and tries to meet up with student executives at least once a month and has attended many virtual events as well. So Sarah, tell us about Laura Jo's plan for continued blended learning. What is it? Well, blended learning is a style of education in which students learn online media as well as face-to-face -face traditional teaching. Basically, students would just have more control and teachers would be able to track their progress. Is blended learning as effective as traditional in-person classes? Well, blended learning has been effective for most. Actually, a recent study by the Center for Digital Education found that 73% of educators who have adopted this instruction model have noticed an increase in student engagement. Thank you, Sarah. That's all the time we have for you today, reporting live from our news center tonight. You're watching Nate News Watch. With the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, Hockey Alberta has decided to cancel all games for the 2021 season. Hockey Alberta said that there have been many efforts to get players back on the ice, but with the new restrictions put in place, the earliest the season could potentially start would be March 1st. We're pulling out every stop, trying to get every program possible uh, that might be required to get those kids on the ice because the parents say, you know, not only do the kids love the game, it's so important for their mental and social, uh, mental and physical well-being. Hockey Alberta says that they will continue to work with the Alberta government and health officials to help put in place a relaunch program, especially for those 2003 born players who have been unable to get scouted for the university level this year. With changes to air travel taking place, those that wish to go abroad are going to have to pay a very steep price. Travelers coming back to Canada will be having to spend three nights in a government approved hotel out of their own pocket. There are concerns that said accommodations would simply not be worth the $2,000 price tag. So it would, it would bother me financially, it would bother my, you know, energetically to stay in like a prison hotel, it would be super weird. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I really am not looking forward to doing that, you know. So I'm hoping that if I do travel, it's somehow um, essential travel. There is no timeline for when these new rules will be lifted. The annual Deep Freeze Festival is returning to Borden Park yet again, but this time with a few twists. Volunteers are hard at work setting up for this year's event, which starts on February 5th. 
This time around, planners have to make do with fewer attractions. This is a huge festival filled with so many performers, uh, multidisciplinary artists. So we have Ukrainian dance or we have Ukrainian musicians and uh, we have theater artists. So typically we would have that all live. Um, in this case, we've moved everything online with regards to performance. Luki also says that this will be a self-guided experience and will last for 10 days as opposed to three to allow time to get through everything. Well, the Canadian Football League has been shut down due to COVID-19, and an Edmonton football player has made the most of his time off and opened up a specialty chocolate and coffee shop. Diego Villamontes moved from Mexico City to Edmonton in 2019 to join the Edmonton football team as a wide receiver, and just one year later, he, he and his wife Sarah opened up CH Cafeteria. Via Montez says that the support from the Edmonton community has been overwhelming. Uh, everybody is excited that we got the coffee shop and they, everybody is, is happy that uh, we got to stay, stay here and, and apport something to the community. CH Cafeteria is located at 14802 uh, in Stony Plain Road in West Edmonton. You can follow the shop on social media as well at ch.cafeteria. Coming up after the break, Edmonton police and firefighters teamed up to raise money for the Special Olympics. How the Polar Plunge changed this year and is running during COVID. It's just seeing the joy and the, and the happiness that that brings. And This week in sports, I look into the 2021 virtual Berkey and get some skiers' opinions. Also, take a look at the world's longest hockey game happening this week and into next. All that and more in sports. Well, it's been a snowy and cold week, but I'm here with my buddy George. He gave me the lowdown on what to expect for the weather this weekend across the province. And I'm gonna tell you after this. Well, Dawson, it has been a cold and snowy week. Our weather guy, Thomas, is here to let us know if relief is on the way or if we're going to suffer just a little bit more. Thanks, guys. I'm afraid I have some bad news, though. It's going to be pretty cold for the next week. I don't know if those guys playing in the world's longest hockey game know what a polar vortex is, but they're going to find out by the end of the week. So we're going to start off in Calgary where we can expect temperatures of between minus 17 and minus 19 for Saturday, moderate chance of snow. We're gonna move on to Jasper where it's actually a lot milder, so it might not be a bad idea to get out to the mountains and pick up a ski pass, a high of minus 10, a low of minus 15, with a 40% chance of snow. However, you may wanna get out there early because Sunday morning, it's looking to be in chilly, minus 26. Up in Fort McMurray, they're definitely gonna get the worst of it. They have a high of minus 28 and a low of minus 31, but it is going to be sunny, so that's a silver lining, I guess. We're going to come back home to Edmonton now, where we have a high of minus 21 and a low of minus 31. That's about 20 degrees below our average seasonal temperatures, which you can see here, we are normally sitting around minus 4 and minus 14. Our records are set, the first one in 1886, at 12 degrees. Now the very next year in 1887, they set the record on the other end with minus 39. Now we can complain about the cold weather now, but at least it's not that bad. Thanks guys, that's all I have today for weather. Back to you. Newswatch Weather is brought to you by NR92, the station for the students. The EPS is teaming up with Edmonton Fire Rescue Service for its 10th annual Polar Plunge fundraiser, but this time the event will all be online. In place of the traditional plunge, the two teams will battle in a friendly water fight. EPS Chief Dale McPhee says that this is about more than just getting outside and spraying people with ice cold water. This is a route about special athletes, special Olympic athletes, and you know, giving the ability to give them the opportunity to succeed. Uh, and it's just seeing the joy and the, and the happiness that that brings. And Many others have started showing their support by doing their own challenges and posting it on social media. We are now joined by Josh Horlack. From the CFL to a, a possible world record hockey game, he's got you covered. Let's check in with Josh now to see what's going on in sports.
Thanks, guys. Now, playing a, hockey, playing a game of shinny in a polar vortex might not be your idea of fun, but that hasn't seemed to stop 40 dedicated players from trying to make a difference. The world's longest hockey game is being played right now just outside Edmonton on Sakers Acres to raise money in support of the Cure Cancer Foundation. The puck dropped and the timer started for the game just last night around 6 p.m. and they will play through next week until the 14th for a total of 252 hours. However, unlike other years when thousands of people would drive out to Sakers Acres, this game will have no fans in attendance. Cheering us on has always been the part when you're tired and it's hard to skate. That's always been a, a, a big deal because there's lots of people around here. Even though fans won't be able to watch the game live, Sake still urges people to come and drive by the rink and honk to show their support for the players and volunteers. WHL has made the announcement that they have been approved to start their season in Alberta. The league will consist of only five Alberta-based teams to form the Central Division, including the Red Deer Rebels, Lethbridge Hurricanes, Medicine Hat Tigers, Calgary Hitmen, and the Edmonton Oil Kings. You know what it might be, it might be slow to start, but I think I think all the guys are really excited to get back to it. The season will consist of 24 regular season games, with games only being held on weekends and mandatory tests for players and staff every week. With the 2021 Canadian Berkey being postponed till next year, skiers are still getting excited to compete in this year's virtual Berkey. Jim Black has competed in the Canadian Birkenbeiner 23 times, and even now, despite the race being changed to a virtual series only, he still has high hopes for the race and the cross-country ski community. So it's almost mission accomplished in some way. We've given the skiing community some hope up until now. They just don't actually have get to go out and do the real event. Even with the event going virtual, the cross-country skiing community is still getting very excited to get out and compete. The Edmonton football team has announced that Jamie Elzondo will be replacing Scott Milanovic as the team's new head coach. Jamie got a start in the CFL in 2008 and he successfully worked through the ranks to prepare himself for this opportunity. Along with becoming head coach, Coach Elzondo will be taking on the roles of quarterback coach and offensive coordinator. Elzondo had previously been with the Ottawa Red Blacks, where he worked closely as offensive coordinator with Edmonton's quarterback, Trevor Harris. In the end, I'm just a guy that loves football and everything that it stands for. And I know our staff and organization are made up of the same type of people. With the preseason for the CFL set to start in the end of May, Elzondo should have enough time to get himself and his new team ready to play. Also, we do have the live stream from the world's longest game here, so let's check that out now. As you can see, they're just lining up for their first face-off. Or, not first face-off, first face-off of many as they have been playing for about the past 19 hours. This has been Sports with Josh Hauerlach. Wow, I can't imagine playing out for 19 hours. That would be so much. I really do wonder how they stay warm, though. What I've heard is that they have, they have hot shots that they place in their skates, and they also have sets of heated gloves for everyone. Well, let's hope they find a way to stay warm. This has been your look at sports. Well, with all the cold going on, com with all the cold coming this week, I might have to bundle up and make my way to Diego's Cafe. And I'd want to go check out that hockey game. I want to see if they crack 150 goals. Well, from all of us, from myself and Dawson and the rest of the Newswatch crew, thank you for watching. And be sure to check out check us out at NateNewsWatch.ca. We hope to see you back next week. <laughs>